everybody, I'm Suwin Pin. This week's episode, I have urgent news from Cambodia. Terry Seng is a Cambodian-American lawyer who has been long known for one of the most outspoken against Cambodia Prime Minister Hun Sen and his government. She is ordered to stand trial on Thanksgiving Day at Phnom Penh Municipal Court. On a Facebook posting page, Terry said, she is not afraid of jail, and she will appear in court. Jared Genson, her former law school classmate and his team, agreed to represent her for pro bono. We hope to speak with him in an upcoming segment. Meanwhile, we will speak to Bidash, another former classmate at Michigan Law School. Situation in Cambodia is alarming. Human Rights Watch report, there are 55 individuals, political prisoners have been detained for exercising their freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and association as of October. Recently, on November 14, 68 more people have been ordered to appear in court to stand trial for conspiracy, incitement, and treason. Their name will post it at the CNRP closed headquarter in Phnom Penh. Some received a notice delivered by hand to their resident, and they are including in eight province across the country, spreading from Kampong Cham, Sihanouk, but the Mong, Prevang, Mintamin J, Takao, and Kampong Spu. Those who live in Thailand and the US, Korea, Japan, the Cambodian authority will broadcast through media and that will consider as sufficient to appear, all to appear in court on Thanksgiving Day, November 26th, next week. Joining with me now is B Dash. He is the former classmate of Terry Sang at Michigan Law School. He is a constitutional lawyer and also the former third congressional district in Massachusetts candidate back 2018. He got in touch with Terry recently. So we want to know what did he learn and what can he share with us regarding Terry's situation? Hello, hi Bish. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for making time to join with me this morning. Absolutely. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, we're working our way, getting close to Terry, and I know she. we've been following her uh, posts on social media as well as website, and very few people have access to her. Um, as we know, the delegate situation right now, so I... Uh, saw your Facebook page that you got her Facebook page that she got to talk with you. Um, so I reached out just again, thanks for being on. Want to hear what did you learn and what can you share with us? Yeah, well, um, you know, thank you uh, for the attention that you're putting uh, uh, to this important matter. Um, you know, she is a visionary. Uh, you know, I've known her for, um, you know, almost a quarter century now. Uh, we met uh, in law school. We were friends. Um, you know, Terry has always been an incredibly thoughtful person. Um, and, you know, we, uh, uh, I think in the law school community, we're all uh, very um, proud of her, but we're also very uh, concerned. You know, um, the regime that she is, um, you know, up against uh, has taken away over the last several months, uh, accelerating um, uh, the personal liberties that uh, we had hoped would never uh, you know, be an issue in Cambodia again. Um, you know, in the early 2000s, uh, Michigan Law School, which is our alma mater, did a lot of work and several professors there did a lot of work on the constitution uh, in Cambodia and patterning uh, human rights um, and uh, uh, you know, making a strong framework 
for constitutional protections. So, um, you know, I think it, it's that framework into which, uh, uh, you know, our dear friend has um, continued to advocate and she's continuing to advocate for, uh, you know, religious, personal, um, uh, you know, personal, social uh, freedoms and processes, you know, and what, what, you know, she's not a radical, uh, you know, she's a, a very principled human being. She's uh, someone who's saying, look, um, you, um, you know, can't take people's minds and souls through force. You've got to allow people to express themselves in ways that are uh, important in a uh, civilized and complex society as Cambodia is, right? I mean, if you look at Hun Sen himself, um, you know, it's shocking to me that someone who once fled um, the Khmer Rouge, um, you know, that he was notionally maybe even part of, uh, is now, you know, doing the same thing to uh, political dissidents. Um, and again, we're not looking at somebody who's, uh, you know, she's not a, um, you know, a terrorist. She's not a, um, uh, you know, rabble rouser trying to create uh, trouble in society. She's a thoughtful, soft-spoken, constitutional lawyer who's trying to protect rights. And she's not even trying to do it from the safety of the United States. You know, uh, the, I know some of the news articles said that she was, you know, going to travel in to attend her trial. She's very much in Cambodia and she's very much, um, you know, there to respond to, um, you know, this very unjust trial that they, they're going to put her through. And I think, you know, if you look at it, um, those of us who care about her, um, you know, have advocated for her to leave. Uh, I don't personally think it's, um, you know, uh, it's it's necessarily a safe thing for her to do, but this is her conscience. This is her s internal struggle that, you know, we're all very proud that she's going to um, take a stand, but, you know, none of us are happy that a dear friend of ours is in that position. Um, I also, you know, history of Cambodia has gone down several paths for people uh, who were most outspoken against government this way and they all did not end well. They either have fled or they have been gunned down. Uh, and Perry on her Facebook page said, if convicted, she will be jailed to uh, 12 years. And uh, uh, the notice that summoned her to the court only 20 days and on Thanksgiving day, so, uh, likely not enough time to prepare to defend herself. Um, and as a constitutional lawyer, looking at the situation in Cambodia now, is this the con? Is it is it right to say that that at this point Cambodia constitution itself is under attack under Prime Minister Hun Sen government? Yeah, and, and I hate to say that, and I hate to say that sitting here in America as an co American constitutional lawyer, looking at another country's sovereignty. Um, and internal affairs, right? You always have to be somewhat sensitive to um, the criticism that you know you're you're looking from afar. Um, but you know, look, um, we as a country here in the United States have just gone through a major period of constitutional attack uh, from inside as well. Um, you know, I know there's a hotly contested election that has just finished, um, but. Uh, you know, the constitutional attacks from the Trump administration on our system of government, um, you know, politicizing, for example, the Justice Department, right? Um, very similar to what you're seeing now under uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen's uh, administration. Um, whenever you take uh, political discourse and you make it criminalized, uh, you're going to attack the very foundations of constitution. Constitution creates uh, different departments that are supposed to regulate different functions. Free speech uh, should not be generally regulated, right? Unless you're in a 
crowded movie theater and someone says fire, um, it's generally free speech is of a people to decide how to govern themselves. Um, and criminal laws are really there to protect us from each other. You know, we're, we're, we're there so that if someone commits a crime that affects somebody else, um, you know, now the, the act of treason um, is a very serious charge. And again, you know, let's be clear, uh, Terry has not done anything that anywhere approximates that type of charge. You know, she's a political activist. She's a human rights activist. She's a civil rights activist. And what she's done is basically highlight that Cambodians and Cambodian citizens are citizens of a constitutional system of government that should be protected by that constitution. And for that statement, you know, she's being subjected to uh, what is a broadside by the Hun Sen government. And, you know, I'll be honest, um, I think all of us here in America who care about Cambodia, and especially Cambodian Americans and, and those who are in power here in the United States who are of Cambodian uh, descent, uh, should be up in arms about this. Because this is not a political issue. This is a constitutional, moral, and civil rights issue. Well, whether or not you support, uh, you know, Prime Minister Hun Sen's government, and some do, um, you know, attacking the civil liberties of Cambodians uh, who are doing nothing but expressing free speech rights is a very dangerous situation that does not end well in any country. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think the, the fear for all of us is, you know, look, we all have a personal interest. Um, as constitutional lawyers, we, uh, we want to stand up for what's right. But uh, we also have a friend here now that's involved. And I do not want uh, Terry to spend uh, a moment uh, in jail or under the, 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 the watchful eyes of, of um, a government that's um, intent on harming her. And so, uh, these are things that, you know, we're, we're very concerned about uh, because, you know, not only is society being affected in a bad way, I mean, this trial that is uh, being, you know, um, put forth in a rushed fashion uh, doesn't affect just her, but, you know, dozens of other people and, um, you know, all of their safety uh, is involved and we should all be up in arms about this. And, um, you know, I know there's been a letter um, to um, um, to Secretary uh, Pompeo from uh, uh, certain senators, including uh, Senator Markey uh, and Senator Warren um, and uh, Congresswoman um, uh, Trahan and others. Um, you know, I hope that that letter is not just uh, a gesture. Uh, I don't think it's going to result in much to a Secretary of Pompeo who is uh, an utter disaster as a Secretary of, of State. But I'm hoping that the incoming uh, Biden administration will take it seriously and will take the human rights abuse amongst, you know, t you know Terry is also a, 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 you know, uh, you know, a person that is protected under US constitutional protection. So I'm hoping uh, that status will give, and I know she would never use it you know, and this is the thing about Terry that's amazing. It's not about her, right? She's, she's a soft-spoken yet fearless advocate for, um, you know, the protections that she believes all people should have. Uh, but I think, you know, those of us who care about her will advocate um, um, for, um, you know, as much involvement and, um, you know, from, from the government of the United States, um, you know, to protect uh, a U.S. citizen. I think that cloud just our mind at this point. Uh, we often saw many political activists uh, got arrested, put in jail, and fled, or those who had a chance fled. But uh, Perry, she stayed, and she said that she's going to face trial. Um, and 
what sort of rights as she has to, uh, she has a dual citizenship at the, uh, what sort of rights that uh, the US can protect her at this point or, or what we can do? Or yeah, it, I mean, it, 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 it's a great question. Um, you know, fundamentally the US has uh, interest in protecting the rights of US citizens throughout um, the world. Um, at least that was prior to the Trump administration. Under the Trump administration, um, you know, uh, protections of the U.S. government and, uh, you know, of U.S. citizens became much more politicized. You know, this is exactly what we're uh, looking at and criticizing um, in Cambodia under the Hun Sen uh, administration as well, which is, um, you know, rights are rights. You know, they should not be altered by what people's viewpoints are. Um, now, uh, assuming um, that the Biden administration returns to that type of protection, um, you know, we are um, hopeful that diplomatic pressure would um, alleviate um, the, the process issues. But he, here's the problem. I mean, her, her trial starts on the 26th. Um, you know, all indications are that it's going to be a very rushed trial, right? And um, you have a trial in which, um, you know, the charge itself is bogus, right? And so think about that. I mean, think about um, a criminal trial in the United States where the charge itself on its face doesn't make sense. So, you know, <laughs> con conviction there is, um, you know, how do you defend against that? How do you defend, especially when you're proud of your conduct? You're not gonna say, I didn't do it. You're gonna say, yeah, I have a right to do it. And if the court is not inclined to protect the rights of its own citizens under pressure from an administration that has shown brutality, forget about, um, you know, the, uh, you know, rights and imprisonment. It's, it's, uh, it's not been a kind administration. And those of us who have followed uh, and care about that community, you know, I did work um, uh, business uh, in Cambodia um, in, in, you know, uh, uh, 2010, 2011, 2012. Um, and, um, you know, my mother, as you know, has been um, at the University of uh, Massachusetts Lowell. She's written about uh, the Cambodian community in Lowell and also the diaspora from Cambodia. Um, we have a deep interest in, in, in the culture and the people. And I will tell you, um, it's so sad to see a country that has come so far um, then proceed backwards for no apparent reason except the ego and the, um, you know, uh, machinations of a of a of a dictator who's becoming a dictator, you, you know, and and that's not fair. You know, he should reverse course and realize that you know he has support, and you don't need in a situation like that. You don't need to do the things that he's doing to solidify support. Work on the rights and economic and social development of the country without the kind of um, you know, um, pressures he's putting on justice and civ civil institutions. That I think is, is, is our hope. But, you know, again, uh, 26th of November is the trial. Um, in all likelihood will be a rushed trial. Um, I do fear for her safety and I do pray that, uh, your publication, um, and your attention that you're giving uh, to her will help move public opinion. Because at this point, it is a public opinion um, a trial as much as anything else. In fact, this is probably a more important trial uh, than the one that will start on the 26th, because that one we know is unfair. We know on its face the charges are unfair. We know that the process is driven by a political motive, not a, a judicial one. So this forum 
uh, hopefully will get a lot of attention to a fact that a um, peaceful, um, you know, socially conscious, socially minded constitutional lawyer who is trying to highlight the rights of Cambodian citizens and their right to exist peacefully uh, is being put on trial for a, a charge of treason. Uh, it's unbelievable. You know, that's, that's for spies and um, people who want to destroy countries. Here is a peaceful woman trying to protect the rights of her fellow citizens. It is, it is such, a, such a misfit. And, um, and that's why I think um, many of us are, um, you know, so up in arms about this. As you mentioned, uh, the charge was bogus and they do not fit. I was trying to dive into that as well. And I, it, it did not make sense to me as well. And when you sp spoke with her, I know you had a chance. What did you learn specifically that they charge for treason, conspiracy, uh, to um, conspiracy and incite, incitement uh, and treason? So, like, what to specific that did she say or do? Um, what did she share you that you're able to, to share with us? You know, I, yeah, look, I, I think it's important to remember that, um, you know, the, the charges are very vague. Um, the, um, the claims that are being made against her do not fit um, what her conduct has been. Um, if you look at her specific conduct, it is uh, the conduct of a civil rights lawyer. It's consistent with the laws not only of Cambodia, but international and U.S. law. She hasn't done anything that would uh, suggest that there should be any attention whatsoever. Forget about criminal attention, any attention. Um, so the, the, the issue here really is this is a political charge. It's not based on conduct that, um, you know, that's, that's inappropriate. Um, I think, you know, look, my, my hope is that um, you know, we have another friend of ours uh, from uh, Michigan Law School that has um, agreed um, to represent her. Um, our hope is that they are allowed into the country to do so in person uh, and so that she can mount a defense that's open uh, and exposes this charge and this process for what it is. Um, but, you know, there is nothing. Um, that um, you can say is a specific reason why they have charged her. This is clearly based on her advocacy, based on the fact that she is a prominent um, female advocate for the rights of Cambodians. Um, and that, I think, is what should scare all of us, right? It's not that she went in uh, to a specific um, area uh, and took government secrets and shared it with others. It's not that she went in and is trying to subvert the government of Cambodia. It's not, you know, the charges have no correlation to what is, you know, treason, which is, you know, basically a high crime. And, um, uh, you know, the charges, the specific charges uh, do not match any of her conduct. So th that's the problem, right? If you could, if you could say that, well, no, it's this one act, um, then you could fight it on that basis. What she is up against is a, you know, generalized, um, uh, you know, government action um, that um, is politically motivated and not motivated by any specific set of facts. Well, Bidash, thank you so much for spending your time and bringing in your input into this. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you for, you know, all of uh, the work that you're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, let us all pray that, uh, you know, she comes out of this safely and that the country comes through this dark period, um, uh, you know, uh, more enlightened. And, uh, you know, I, I do pray for... Uh, uh, both our dear friend, but also the country in, that she's fighting for right now. 
Thank you very much, Thank Pete. you. Thank you. That was B Dash, the constitutional lawyer, former classmate with Terry Singh, and also former third congressional district candidate in 2018. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sobin Pin. See you next time.